Hi there, welcome back to Headbangers Ball. Once again, we are tracking a band down in their natural habitat, and that, of course, is out on the road. And tonight, we're in Glasgow's number one rock club, The Cat House. And uh, we're going to be catching up on the opening night of the COC European Tour. And uh, that's all happening over the next part of tonight's show. And as you can see, I've got uh, Reed and Pepper joining me here in Glasgow. So welcome back to Europe, you guys. How are you doing? Thank you, my dear. Wunderbar. Good, good. Mucho now, wunderbar. I last met up with you um, when You're you were right. supporting kind of Soundgarden. What? In 91, that's when I last saw you. Oh, that's right, we were, in, we were in Broome. That's right, and now you're back on headlining tour over the next three weeks. Yes. Um, what are your ex expectations of the upcoming European tour? Pain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it'll be good. I mean, we know what to do, so I hope everybody else does. Yeah. Because you've just done, actually, uh, some American dates, haven't you? How did yeah, they go? Yeah. Oh, it was awesome. About a uh, month and a half we did with Keypone, and the other half was with uh, I Hate God. Right. Yep, from New Orleans. You saw, yeah, you yeah. were there. Yeah, you good, the big, good guys. They you are. Saw the big pools of blood. Yeah, it was, it was a good show. Yeah, yeah I was know. there in Phoenix. So um, we want to talk about the new album, Deliverance, and I think uh, I know you've been asked this question many times, but uh, I think to set the record straight for our viewers, could you explain um, what happened with Carl and why he's no longer in the band? Uh oh. Uh, it was kind of one of those trouble in paradise kind of things, and uh, he's not here. Well, we don't. We don't want to throw rocks or nothing. He's no. not here to defend himself, so. Right. It's but better. It came out like it's supposed to, and you know we did it for a reason. It, it was, you know, 50-50 parting ways. So we did it. We wanted to. We had to. He didn't disagree, so it happened. Right. Right. Okay. And you've got another lineup change as well. You've got um, Mike Dean back on bass, having you been away for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And Mike's uh, back in the uh, in the fold mm -hmm. after a six-year sabbatical. Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. So, um, I mean, there has been like three years between albums, um, yeah, and there's for two, you know. yeah, I know, but that's um, a lot of changes have been going on in the rock scene and so on. Um, I know punk rock's supposed to be big now or yeah, something, huh? Well, it's definitely coming back in. I mean, was that was there any kind of frustrations in in between times when you weren't making a record? No. 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 There were no frustrations. <laughs> so, um, I mean, we, got, we went to the studio, we did a record we knew what we wanted to do, and we did it. You know, It just took a long time to get record labels changed and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We knew what we were doing. We knew exactly what we were doing. That was uh, a big portion of the trouble in paradise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's getting all that stuff straightened out. Yeah. But we yeah. felt it was worth doing, so we, we decided that time was not an issue anymore. Yeah, I can appreciate that. So, um, I mean, for Deliverance, the new record, um, I'm wondering if you, like, all shared the same vision of the way COC should go, or if one person had more influence than the others? Uh, I think the people that are in it now shared the same mm -hmm. vision. Hence, yeah. hence, exactly. that's, that's hence, the, hence the lineup change. Yeah, yeah. So we're in there. Yeah, definitely. Good. But, I mean, when we started out, Carl and, and Phil were still in there. Yeah. Yeah. And then we, that's when you realized that you didn't share the same vision. Yeah, <laughs> it was a little sketchy, but uh, you know, it's good. It all worked out for the best. Yeah. Happily yeah. ever after. Indeed. And if you listen to the record, you will see that that is the case. Now, um, Deliverance uh, musically is, is pretty no frills. It's a lot more straight ahead rock music, a um, bit of blues influence coming in there. Now, you have obviously improved as musicians along the way. Um, and I'm just wondering, um, how did you kind of achieve a balance between um, kind of demonstrating that but actually not becoming self-indulgent as well? It's not an easy thing to do, you know. I mean, we just, we wrote, we wanted to write songs, period. You know, we didn't care what other hardcore trends were bouncing around or what other bands were doing. We wanted to do what we thought we needed to do. You know, of course, everybody gets better as they become older or whatever, but you can't forget where you came from. So there's a fine line between yeah. jumping to be a you know whatever rock band and, and still rem remembering where you came from yeah. so we tried to do a good balance between both yeah definitely okay well we will talk to reed and pepper some more in just a few moments but we're going into the first video from deliverance and you've seen this before on headbangers ball <laughs> and take another look at it right now this is corrosion <laughs> of conformity and we're going to have a look at albatross once again, we're in Glasgow at the Cat House, and uh, we're bringing you all the action from the opening night of Corrosion of Conformity's European <laughs> Tour. Yeah, we got COC live on the way a little bit later on, and as you can see, I've got Reed and Pepper yeah, talking to me, and we're talking about the new record, Deliverance. Now, um, 
You mentioned this a little earlier, but I uh, would like to bring it up again, and that is that the deliverance has seen corrosion of conformity making what some people consider to be a controversial jump to a major label. Um, what does that actually mean to you on practical, everyday terms? A lot more money. <laughs> <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with that. It wasn't a political cop-out or any of that shite. You know, we just... They were better at getting the record in stores, you know. That was our main goal. We, we were on the independent label for, you know, Lord knows how many years. It's all fun and dandy to do it, but the record wasn't in the stores. You know, it's, it's cool, whatever, you know, say whatever you want. But these guys are behind us 100% and they are into the band. You know? So that, that, that's our only reason for doing it. Yeah. Well, I can understand that, because if you go on tour and then Burn. you see that your album isn't in the yeah. shop, then that's infuriating. Yeah, and all the stigma attached to major labels before, I think it's totally unwarranted. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, about bands mm -hmm. being pushed to, like, compromise their ideals mm -hmm. or their integrity or something mm -hmm. like that. All that, like, rotted away with Nirvana. Mm -hmm. I think Nirvana, like, tore all that shit down. Mm -hmm. well, and, and, and let's do whatever you know, the hell we want to. Know, we, um, do whatever, we do more on this label than we ever do on an independent label. I know, that's true. Because we now we have more resources. Yeah, so well I can understand that. that, but I mean also, as you said, you did grow up through an independent label. Oh and yeah, and we put out our, re our records yeah, ourselves too, so definitely. we know all sides. So it makes sense. So, um, I mean, do you still feel an affinity with the um, hardcore kind of punk scene, or do you feel that you've actually outgrown it? Outgrown it? Well, I... I, mm, I feel, I feel, what's affinity mean? <laughs> um, um, closeness. Um, 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 closeness, yes. I, of course, I, you know, I do. A synergy. Uh, oh, yeah, yes, yeah, of course. You know, if I saw a black flag right now, I'd probably cry. <laughs> but, you know, fuck. For us, that was a particular time and a place. Mm. It probably lasted from 81 to 87 or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's great for a lot of the kids that are just checking the stuff out now, mm -hmm. like some of the bands now, but uh, mm, to, like put ourselves in a little corner and do that for the next 20 years, like, you know, we don't want to be playing, it'll be like the Ramones and playing Blitzkrieg Bop for the next 20 years, you know right. what I mean? Right, right. So... You just gotta remember those times and, and take it with you, you know? And don't, yeah, try and don't try and repeat yourself, take it for what it was, nobody's gonna repeat the scene over, it ain't gonna happen again. No, take right. it and move on. A lot of bands have done it, they've done well at it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, if we could talk a little bit about the lyrics, Pepper, because um, they're uh, less, I would say they are actually quite, um, they're not controversial, like um, on the last album, Blind. And um, I would say, in a nutshell, although it's difficult to kind of summarize these things, but mm. it seems to me that you were looking kind of inwards rather than looking <clears throat> outwards. Would you agree with that? Uh, I guess so. You know, most of the lyrics were just were written about things that were actually within grasp and not, and not so far away outside things that really, that, that matter, but don't really matter, you know, like, it's, it's all cool to worry about your president of the United States and all that kind of stuff, but it's also an issue when you see people starving on the street next door outside of your apartment when you leave. Those, those were things that were more important to me, and uh, things that I could grab, as opposed to writing about big issues that, you know. But, but I mean, time, you know, it's important. I think the lyrics are very pointed, but they're disguised better, you know. We wanted to write songs. We didn't, yeah, want, we, we didn't want to give history lessons. We didn't want to tell people about the troubles in Panama. No. You know, you want to try and, and write something where they can, a person can pull their own meaning out of it, you exactly. know, which is more important than, like I said, the history lesson. Yeah. And I think it, if that is the case, that people will focus on the music more as well yeah. and not it's just, it's kind of think of you. It out, you know? We're just trying to balance things out and, and become songwriters, you know, and mm -hmm. keep it all together. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll talk to the guys a little bit more. We've got some more music on the way right now. And, Trouble. Uh, well, I was going to say, let's have another look at Corrosion of Conformity on video. And remember, we've got some live performance right, coming right. up a little bit later on as well. So stay tuned. We'll see you in a bit. from Corrosion of Conformity are still here joining me on Headbangers Ball and uh, like I said we're going to be showing you some COC live very shortly so watch out for that. Um, 
just sort of generally now, guys, um, it seems that COC is constantly evolving as, as a band. You've had different members in and out along the way, and all your albums sound very different to me. Um, do you think that that's allowed you um, to cross a lot of musical boundaries? And it's been, you know, you can appeal to um, metal, punk, all sorts of different audiences. I'd say definitely, yeah. Thus the name of the band. Yeah. That's our particular charm. Yeah. It lets you do whatever you want to, you know, which is, which is a comforting thing. We're, we're not pigeonholing in any corner. We can do whatever the hell we want. Mm -hmm. and, but at the same time, you don't want to shoot all your fans in the head, you know. I mean, you want to... Some, most of the people understand what we're doing anyway, and they expect us to grow, and, you know, and I respect that as much as we respect them. So it works out pretty good. So what kind of feedback have you had from fans on Deliverance? Oh, it's been really good, particularly, yeah. you know, a lot of the old folks are pretty stoked that Mike Dean's back in the band, too. Yeah. Yeah. But like Pat was talking about, I mean, we could tour with Brutal Truth or we could tour with ACDC. Mm. I mean, we could do whatever we want. Yeah, and that shows just how many boundaries, you know, you can cross and appeal yeah. to a very wide audience. Yeah, it's an important yeah. thing to try and do these days because some things seem to be getting pretty watered down, you know. Mm. So, but a lot of bands are pushing things, which is good. Good, yep. good. That's the way it should be. Now, you worked um, with the same producer as for Blind, John Custer. Yeah. Um, now, but having said that, this album has, in my opinion, for what that's worth, <laughs> it's a much better production value. Um, did you have a bigger budget? How did you achieve that? Uh, no, it wasn't bigger. We just did it on an automated board, <laughs> you know, <laughs> as opposed to the last one. We were all, each person had a fader. Yeah. And we were experimenting, you know, and we experimented a lot on this record, but uh, it just seemed to work, you know. And we didn't, we, there's no electronic stuff, there's no gates on it, there's no effects, it's just guitars. And we learned that the less you have between a mic and the tape, yeah. the better it's going to sound. Yeah. You know? So that's what we did. Good. The less we could do, the better. Right. So you've got this um, three week or so tour coming up in Europe. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, what, what other things have you got happening in the future? Um, in the middle of January, we start a little tour with Megadeth in the States. Right. We're going to do that for like a month and a half. Um, it's going to be us and them, so that'll be cool. Yeah. Getting yeah. the general admission shows. Yeah, so. so, yeah. No seats so the kids can go mm -hmm. nuts. Mm -hmm. That'll be good. Good. Yeah. And you also um, did the Nativity in Black, the Black Sabbath tribute? Yeah, we did a song called Lord of This World. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, it was a little strange. The idea of doing a Sabbath cover was a little strange to us just because they're so, mm -hmm. such an integral Sacred. part of... Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean... Who, who the hell are we to do a Black Sabbath song? <laughs> yeah, you know? and what are we going to do, make it better? Yeah, exactly. The whole idea was pretty weird, but we did it. We went to a little eight-track studio and did it live. You know, we felt that if we were going to record it, we should at least put ourselves in the same setting they were in and see what happens. Yeah, exactly. So that's what we did. Threw down and did it in a couple hours. Good. Sounds like fun. Yeah. And um, I also heard like a little rumor that you might come back to Europe again for some more shows next year. Mm -hmm. You're going to see how it goes. March, <laughs> March yeah. We're going to come back. Okay. And do it up. Okay, well, maybe we'll catch up with you then, but uh, that's all we've got time for tonight, I'm afraid. Right. But thanks for joining me on Headbangers Ball. Um, that's Corrosion of Conformity. New album, Deliverance, is out now. And uh, actually, uh, before we go off, guys, um, we're going to show a little bit of COC live. Oh, yeah. Last year, fall. 